Hello everybody. This is uh, the first drawing video I've done in quite a while. Uh, anyway, I just want to do something fun. I'm going to import a page from uh, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite, well, my f oh yeah, 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 anyway, yes, Junji Ito, who's really popular right now ever since he got picked up on Toonami or whatever that thing is called, and now they got all the shirts and hot topics, so things have really changed for me, I'm, I'm 42, I've been uh, reading Junji Ito since I discovered him at 22 or 23, so quite a while, I guess. Uh, and yeah, all of a sudden, you know, it's like I, <laughs> all of a sudden, uh, it's everyone knows him. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, for for the record, I've always said him. Uh, he's been a tremendous inspiration to me. But artistically speaking, I'm just not on. I'm not on his level, obviously, uh, and I'm not his style. And and even his creative process is just something beyond. It's just very separate from from how I create. Uh, but I think the bottom line is he's just, I've been enthralled by his stories and quite frankly with you know with a few exceptions uh, and, and there are very few creators who uh, uh, mesmerize me with their work the way Juju Ito does so he's earned all the fame he gets and uh, I'm very excited to see him picking up even though um, one thing that really annoyed me, you know, I'm, I'm happy when these people get their comeuppance and get huge. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, he's probably been huge in Japan for quite some time, but now it's like in the States. I mean, I, mean, I promise you, like he's a fan. It's, it's like nobody knew this guy. You know, uh, the, the one publisher released some of his books and then they just stopped. They stopped uh, translating his work because I, I can only imagine he wasn't selling that good, you know. So I'd go to the stores and ask after some of his work. So, I mean, there were some translating works came out now I guess uh, Viz has the rights to practically all of his all of his uh, work right now for the English English work of Junji Ito and they're obviously doing all right with it, with that uh, with that because uh, they keep on releasing more of it which is which is great for me but yeah one thing is uh, really annoyed me I, I mean the downside of all that is, you know, and I'm, I'm all for you younger people getting into this, you know, you know, I'm all for it. But a lot of these teeny boppers who I, I, this, this sounds very arrogant, but a lot of people just don't have business getting into the creative world or having any commentary on it, honestly, because uh, you know, what happened was I, I, uh, I, uh, you know, I make no secret that I'm really influenced by Juju Ito and the one idiot reviewer um, uh, uh, that called my work racist, and you can watch my video. You can watch my video about that. I made a big testimonial about that, and just what absolute garbage that was. And uh, when things get huge, it lets a lot of these kind of trendies, these uh, very weak-minded people in, you know. And it's just funny, and it's it's just a. I, I just say, you know, have some passion or uh, you, you got to have some kind of passion for this if, if, if you want in or at least before you start making critiques or commentaries. Uh, we, get, we got a lot of these pipsqueaks who see something they don't like and they and they go all uh, wishy-washy. Yeah, this is this racism, you know, and, and this person had not obviously read all of my work before they got to that. It's, it was just so absurd, like, like, like I said. But, uh, and, and, you know... I, I don't necessarily want to ride the coattail of, of uh, any of these big, these big, huge guys. Um, but I would just put it out there. If you like them, so you know, I'm very inspired by these people. And maybe you dig my work. I uh, would humbly say that. And I think that's what just kind of opens the door. I think some, I think, you know, I think Junji Ito fans and Lovecraft fans might, uh, if, if they want something you know, not quite on that level of quality, but uh, very influenced by it, you know, and, and I've met and communicated with a lot of um, a fair amount of really cool readers who, who get who seem to, you know, have pretty much realized that same thing. But, um, you know, sorry to ramble so much. It's a it's, uh, it's it's just it's just discouraging. And it's like, uh, you know, I was really into I think I think his name is pronounced Yonin. I said it's spelled like it's Jonin, but I've heard people say Jonin Vasquez, the creator, of course, of uh, Invader Zim. And so, you know, I remember, you know, in my 20s, saw this young lady walking around with an Invader Zim shirt. I said, oh, cool, you like uh, Jonin Vasquez. Uh, 
you know, that's great, man. I really love those Squee comics and, uh, you know, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, if you, the Homicidal Maniac, if you have not tried, seen those yet. She's just like, why, why are you talking to me? You know, it's that. <laughs> As I was working, I was working at a quick shop, and I just said, "All right, right on." You know, it's just the same, the same. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, I got nothing against Hot Topic selling all these franchises. I'm glad a lot of these people are selling their wares. You know, getting distributed like that. But even like like Cannibal Corpse, I love Cannibal Corpse, man. I've seen them twice, that which is you know, uh, not a ton, but you know, I've seen them live twice. I own several of their shirts. I've been listening to them since I was a teenager and I, I just followed their career at um, Vince Locke's artwork and own all their albums, of course, you, you know, <laughs> everything, uh, even the, the comics based off their lyrics and everything. I love Cannibal, of course. And then it's like, I see some a young man come into, to come into the quick shop I'm working on. I said, dude, Cannibal, Corpse, what'd you think their last album? He's like, last album, I said, you know, the most recent one. Oh, I know. <laughs> So, I think what I'm saying is I feel a little old to be talking like this, but, uh, you know, if you're a poser, go away. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you know, because not like, not like I think you have no right to try out these things and go for it, but if you don't have the heart or the passion or even the mind for it, just piss off. Sorry. So, anyway, let's begin. This is what I want to do today. I'm going to open. I'm putting this image from Junji Ito right here. It's from Voices in the Dark. This is the one where that involved bats, and of course, no spoilers. Go check it out. If you don't know Junji Ito, but you know me, I don't know what's going on here. Thank you for watching my video, but uh, Junji Ito, he was, I mean, he's huge now, like I said, but man, he, he's got the work to back that up. He's done just a plethora. It's an, an abyss of amazing horror creativity. So let's go to panel. And let's insert that. There we go. I'm going to go to draw tab. I'm going to go to the layer I've imported and I'm going to put it down to around, oops, that's not the right one. This one, there we go. Let's put that at, at 45, why not? And let's go back to my draw layer. Make sure this is at 100. And I'm going to do my best to replicate this panel layout. Oops, I'm in draw still, my bad. Let's go back to panel. There we go. And I have noticed this, this wide um, vertical panel separation I'm not a big fan of. And if any of you know a way to fix that, to, to make them not so wide, kindly let me know. I've, I've tried looking, I just could never found any information on how to get around that. So we laid out the panels. Oops. I found uh, the on my tablet the I think around uh, some somewhere between seventeen and twenty magnification is pretty good. I'm gonna uh, I'm up to twenty seven now, obviously. I'm going to go to draw. Uh, let's select. And, and uh, manga, of course, follows the manga style. So if you hit the first, it will start on the top right corner. Because I do, I draw, I, I create comics in Western fashion. I, so I just got to get used to, you know, getting around that. Just doing it, doing it from the opposite direction to make a left to right comic. Manga doesn't agree with it. You can probably change that in the settings as well, anyway. Um, and that's cool, but I don't know how to, and it's not it's not such a big complication that I really care all that much. So, essentially, what's going on here is I just I love his style so much, and I've I've tried to take some cues. I've looked at his style and just gotten ideas, and that's what you always do. It's, it's, uh, trust me, it's not ripping off, but you always do imitate another artist as you're learning. You try to replicate it, and you will learn. And then over time, you just figure out what works best for you and your style and what does not. And, and frankly, like I said, you know, Junji Ito is just a creator who is he, he's a genius, and he is just very far off from what, uh, from what I will ever be. 
and um, I, it, and he he is definitely better, far more talented than I am. But I'm not. That's not to necessarily say I I don't feel like my work is good. It's just different, you know. Um, when I when I try to do, do things like he does it, it just doesn't have the same effect. He's just got a, he, he's got a different uh, attack with the pen than I do. And one thing I've realized is I, in style, I feel I'm far closer to Hideshi Hino. And if you don't know Hideshi Hino, Hideshi Hino is definitely amazing. Um, hello. Oops. Right, what is going on here? Let's temporarily remove this. Yeah, I'm going to get around that little issue. Yeah. Why? Oh, that's right. Okay, because the so I got to go to the whole entire page. All right, there we go. But of course, you know, tapping on these these folders are the different panels. And so, but I just I like doing this. I like imitating by by tracing, and just kind of get another understanding of what he was doing when he created this. Like I said, I've accepted I'm not gonna I'm never gonna do work like his, but I like I like to just, you know, it's like an empathetic thing to just come in and you know get get some understanding of what he was doing. And what I'll do is I'll 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 trace a few and just try to get a feel and understanding for his line work. He does what he does. Me, essentially, I'm just I'm far more cartoony, you know, if that's a word. I do stuff that feels more uh, cartoonish, and it, but even I don't really want I, I want it to translate. I want it to feel like it can translate into a live action film. So I so one thing I've done is I've tried to balance balance the cartoon with the maybe more real to life. Uh, I, ju I just I wanted to it be, it because because frankly I just don't do realistic looking people now you look at Junji Ito just everything is so his his details are so on point I mean it just it looks like he traced this from reality now his architecture don't even get me started on that his, his architecture it gives me a headache looking at it it's beautiful it's amazing to look at but I, I can't imagine a world where I'm gonna sit down <laughs> and do this stuff. Oftentimes, when when I highlight, uh, I call it the magic wand. I've, I've never even I, I forgot what that thing is even called. Sometimes I'll accidentally drag it a little bit, and you'll get a little white. Uh, uh, I guess not a halo, just a, just a thin little line where it was moved before you did the filling feature. I guess we can move in a little closer. That's one thing. One thing that's going on is he he obviously paints on a larger canvas because these these smaller details. Um, are also are also out of my league because I'm uh, not painting on a, not drawing on a larger canvas. But I guess this is this is a learning experience for me too. And this, I've done this before. I've tried this at least one other time, just to get an understanding of what's going on. Mr. Ito's drawing board. So as I do this, I'm having fun, and I will gradually, I'm going to gradually get a little looser, and and uh, not not so much just trace and replicate. I want to eventually just start merging his style with what feels more natural than me. And I'll confess, a lot of that entails just sloppier lines. I think that's just it. I don't make a lot of money off my comics, and when I'm doing it, I do want a decent product, but I also, well, I want it to be fun. And I think that's it. I think that's how you should approach all things in life, but obviously this stuff is tedious, and I, I suppose 
what I'm trying to say is maybe maybe I could give the kind of time to more obsessive detail in a world where I have that kind of time or I'm making that kind of money, which I am neither. It just um, okay. Next time, if this video works out, I'm frankly, as I as I make this, I'm a little concerned because I'm not even sure if the audio is capturing right. I'm doing I'm doing a different uh, strategy than previously. It'll probably work. Uh, yeah, just just my setup. I'm using a webcam and a, a video capture. So let's start having a little more fun here. Just, just tracing while also just uh, going with my own personal instincts, which are admittedly sloppier. One thing I, I do, I do understand and believe I would probably get a better effect if I did traditional drawing. That's that as much as digital drawing just makes life so much easier and cheaper. I know I'm missing a little something by not doing traditional drawing, and that's a bummer. I've had people tell me they like my old style better, and but bottom line is it was just a lot of money for all that paper, <laughs> and those pens would run out of ink so quickly. I don't know if I was getting bad pens or what, but man, you talk about frustration, just how fast those expensive pens would run out of ink. I'll tell you something else. Back the last time, the last it was years ago, I was last doing uh, traditional pen and paper drawings, and um, man, they, I heard the bad news that... Uh, I shouldn't say the name of the place, but it was in Blacksburg, Virginia. And they said, oh, man, this place is closing down. It's been open for years, and now it's closing down. And I said, I ain't sad at all. And now I would be if I had never met the owner. So it's my anecdotal uh, story. The owner was a complete jerk. And, I, you know, I'm very... Tolerant. I'm very laid back. I'm very understanding. Sometimes people are having a bad day, but I was in really bad shape. I was working a job that I hated, you know, and, 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 you know, you can look at the, my sob stories are out there. I mean, I'm, maybe I just, I just say, so people understand kind of what was going on, but I'd given up so much for my family and I was just, I was working a job that I actually, actually absolutely hated. I'd given up all, I've given up by this time, several jobs that I really loved that made me money and made, brought me happiness and joy. And man, I was so I was working this terrible job, terrible, the worst. Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, that, some of those people really inspired some of my villains. That's how horrible they were. They were mean, nasty, rotten people. And there's a lot of those people out in this land. It's like I said, I'm, I'm not perfect, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a bully. Okay. A lot of these people who call other people's work racist. So there's bullying comes in all forms and uh, slandering people, make, you know, attacking people with baseless nonsense and the kind of stuff I endured at that job. Anyway, where I'm going with this is I walked in there to get some art supplies and I just saw they had a help wanted. I said, hey, I just noticed you got a help wanted. Well, you know, I'm at a job I'm not really liking too much. I wouldn't mind uh, you know, trying something else out. And the guy, oh my Lord, he gave me the dirtiest. He stared at me like... It was just, he, I, I don't know how to describe it. He looked at me like he was looking at an abomination. He was so rude. I finally said, I'm sorry, I'm not like shaved. I just got back from the mountains. I've been out for a while. I've been out walking in the sun. I'm, you know, I was wearing some jeans and, you know, one of my RT t shirts, RT t shirts uh, that my aunt, aunt had sent to me. It wasn't one of my Cannibal Corpse shirts, okay? He was so rude. And I was just saying, hey, I mean, I could just take an application. He said, we do the applications in here. I said, oh, I understand. Uh, that's fine. I said, I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't shaved. I've been out in the mountains. I just, I've been out walking. I wanted to pop in here, get some supplies. I wasn't really counting on seeing a help wanted sign. Or He said, yeah, we wouldn't let you apply like the way you are. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, maybe I can come back at a later time. He still just kept on looking at me like, dude, you know. And then I said, I finally said, well, you know, I've done oh, quite a bit of retail. I think I'm good enough at it. I like art, but uh, whatever. You know, I just kind of walked out. I said, I get it. You know, you, you're it. And, and I kind of noticed the, the people who did work there were younger, uh, like college girls, pretty college girls. I said, I get it. 
I understand. You don't want you, you don't want to look at me. You want to look at some pretty college girls. I get it. Uh, and so you know, I thought you'd just hire based on you know someone wanting to work a job, and maybe being into art, and you know, want to, having a having a passion for this kind of world. But you know, you want some you want some young pretty things. Go for it, old man. You know, now like I was older than most. I was older than co I was not a college kid age, but. It's kind of funny seeing this old dude all, hiring all these pretty young girls and then being so mean to me, you know. I'm like, dude, I'm not, you know, I ain't perfect, but I'm not a bad guy. I didn't mind that his, uh, so I didn't mind when I heard he went out of business. I was happy. I almost made a rude comment. I mean, not, not rude toward my friend who had posted the, oh, no. It was on social media. Just, oh, no, it's closed down. I almost said, uh, I hate to be the party pooper, but I'm glad he's closed down. That guy was rude. And there, that we were walking through downtown. My daughter was only two. She was having a meltdown because she got so tired. And I just kind of, we just happened to walk in there. Oh yeah, man, yeah. This this one uh, young Chinese woman was having a her a showing of her watercolors, and I walked in there. I said, "Oh my lord!" I was looking. I said, "I said these are absolutely uh, stunning. This is this is just great work. Uh, I'd like to steal your style if if you don't mind. You know, just joking around. The people, the young people there were real nice." And she said, why don't you go get some food? And I, I said, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll go see what you got. Thank you very much. Such good work. Such good work. And I walked over. There was that guy. He walked right up. And I was just making my son. He stared at me so bad. I said, I'm not getting into a staring competition. He stared at me. I felt so uncomfortable. I just, I just walked right out. I mean, he gave me a death stare. I don't know why. F that guy. I'm gonna keep the language out of here, but I got I got nothing. I don't got nothing good to say about these guys. Anyway, this is this is probably you know what we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. I think this is enough. You get the idea. I'm just tracing his background to get him, get an understanding. I mean, look at this stuff. You know, I mean, you know, he must get this from real life, and that's just the kind of work I do stuff from memory. I don't fill in the fine details. All these little accessories. I mean, I I give the suggestion of them. I'm just like. You, you know, I, I take out a lot of details from real life. Uh, but still, like I said, I still want it to feel like it could translate into a, a live action film. That's 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 what I want it to play out, not like a cartoon when I'm doing when I'm doing horror. When I'm doing Cran Cranberry Death Sauce, a different story. It can be Ren and Stimpy reality at times. Um, but, yeah, so, so yeah, this is getting... For you i'm sure quite boring so let's uh let's move along start you know i'd, I'd like to at least eh, I'd like to at least get this one panel i'm gonna start getting sloppy where i sloppier so i'm not gonna I'm not gonna make these uh, lines perfect i'm not gonna follow them to a t anymore i'm going to do them as i would in my comics, which is once again, if someone wants to pay me tons and tons of money, we can talk about being a little more attentive to the detail, but for right now, okay, let's take a look at how this looks. Let's uh, get to the entire page, let's link that out. See, and once again, even, even when I'm now, now I'm sure, I'm sure it, it has a lot to do with just the The, uh, and how digital pins work versus how real pins work. I mean, I, I don't know. That sounds like an excuse. But, I mean, you can see, even when I'm trying to pay attention to detail, when I, I, it just doesn't turn out with the sharpness. That's the, that's the bottom line. Junji Ito is obviously doing something very good. And replicating it is just not my destiny. Uh... Let's do one more panel. Oops. There we go. Let's go. Let's pick a let's pick a fun one. Architecture, no way. Well, you know what? Yeah, let's do the architecture. Yeah, let's do the architecture as I would. Let's say house. So so I'm kind of tracing it, but also just kind of imagining what I'd if I just had this as a basic reference, or from memory or something like that. It wouldn't even be this sharp. At least this gives me some lines to go by. 
I like, I like this, you know, usually I make the trees, you know what? Yeah. I'd make the tree a little more like this, uh, instead of filling it all in black. I, but you know, it's like I said, this, this is helpful though. Imitating another person's style, even if it is never going to be anything near what yours is, is a very healthy thing to do creatively. So why not? Huh? Oops. Just go outside your comfort zone and try something a little different and find out why you never did it in the first place. But Junji, Junji Ito is such an incredible. Yeah, I, I have though. I've, I've called some things from him. I, I, I uh, it altered. Uh, I'm doing some pages for my experimental horror comic, uh, Stagnant Blood Time, right now. And definitely Junji Ito played a part in in how that unfolded. It's altered my art style in the middle of things. And one thing I, that's an experimental horror comic where just anything goes. I do it I do it on I'm just keeping it on the cheap. The even the title, Stagnant Blood Time, is supposed to indicate, hey, this is this is just it, it's just a whatever comic. And but uh, if you pick up issue two when it comes out, you'll notice the style, the style which is constantly fluctuating because I'm still discovering what feels better and, and just it's it's, it's um, as I'm creating, I'm I'm experimenting with different styles. Now, I know that might be a little ghetto because I'm actually I'm actually doing the actual comic as I'm feeling out how to you know still trying to discover my, my own style, which is an ongoing process. Always. And uh, it might seem a little ghetto that I'm not, um, that I haven't established a style or that it's changing as I draw. I actually kind of like it, you know. Obviously, when you look back, you wish you'd been doing. Maybe you wish you'd been doing it this way. But I kind of like. I like looking as the story progresses and seeing how the art changes. Uh, and I can kind of say, hey, what looks better to me? Uh, the first stagnant. Uh, Blood Time comic, uh, it, it, it's it's like I start a lot of things where I just promise myself, okay, this is for fun, and then I just oh, as the as it progresses, I always that's how a lot of comics start. Uh, Door to Death, I said this is for fun, and you know the the art just gradually got better, uh, you know, more attention to detail, better quality as as it progressed. You know, pages started long, taking longer to fill out. Uh, I want, I want, I definitely, more than anything, I want to keep stagnant one time, you know, something, something very breezy. I, I don't want that to change. I just want it to be my outlet for that. I've had second thoughts about the name. Kind of, you, you know, I was wondering if I should name it a surgically enhanced cadaver after my death metal project because I started doing uh, short stories for it. You'll see those in issue two. Um, that are based off death metal lyrics that became like stories, you know, you know, uh, lately I'm, I, I'm kind of putting death metal away. I've always loved death metal, but I'm, I'm 42 and I just, sometimes I've just got to get some ideas out of my head. And I'm, since I've been a teenager, I've been on a mission to make uh, death, de uh, make the death metal album that I, I just felt destined to make. And I've, I've done it a couple times. I've recorded a million times and there's been a couple times in my life where I say, okay, I can kind of put it away now. And, and this is one of those times in my last album I did. And the, the lyrically where I was at when I was a kid, you, you know, an angry teenager, I just want to make it as offensive and horrible as I possibly could. I'm not that pissed off young man anymore. Uh, and I told horror stories in the last one. And some of those stories I said, uh, yeah, those would make really cool short stories, and where better to put it than in the um, than in the stagnant blood time experimental do whatever horror comic. So just it's going to take a break from the narrative, the main narrative. Which frankly, I barely even know where that is going right now. If I'm to be honest, I, I started off. I was man, I was reading Censor. I just held that book up by Junji Ito, and I realized some similarities. And I promise you, when I was doing a when I started Stagnant Blood Time, I said, man, I actually want to make it like a sci-fi mashup, put some aliens in there and stuff, you know, just to, you know, I'm really inspired by Siren, which also was influenced by Junji Ito. It's the scope of that man's uh, influence, the things it, it has influenced in other mediums that have all influenced me. 
Remember Junji Ito said he was really influenced by uh, the Evil Dead, the way they made the demons look with the blank eyes. So, I mean, everything's so interconnected. And um, Juwan, he was inspired by, I think he said he was inspired by Juwan. Juwan, which I had loved for a while, before, actually back then, before I had discovered Junji Ito. I was really into the Juwan films, Takashi Shimizu's work. I'll check out his new movie soon. All right, you know what? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just running my mouth. Let's do let's do one more, everybody. This one and this one here. Let's really okay. Let's really merge styles. Once again, this is not what you'd find straight up in a Lee Davis comic, but let's make it a little closer. Let's merge the precise and incredible world of Juji Ito with the sloppy, goofy, cartoony world of Lee Davis and move on with our lives. Fun. Drawing is fun, but it's also nice when it makes a little bit of money or when people like your work. I want to take this opportunity once again to thank everybody who's ever enjoyed my work or said nice things about my work. I really appreciate it. My stuff is selling a wee bit. Door to death has some followers. Thank you. The pipsqueak who call it racist is still an ignoramus wherever he or she may dwell. You don't belong in the world of comics. You can keep your anal retentive, fascistic, politically correct nonsense to yourself. Stay the hell away from me. Don't go near comics that aren't candy ass uh, little exercises in woke PC nonsense. Uh, because you'll start crying about it in an Amazon review and just don't don't bother but for those of you that actually support small-time comic creators that have a real passion for this and like I said I, I, I don't hold back I don't want people to feel sorry for me but I want you but I've got a pretty rough story I mean not just for what happened to my art but um, it's it's a pretty sad one and I I commend myself for never giving up and, uh, you know, prayer and, and, and uh, got me through a lot of it and the voices that influenced me to keep going and the higher power, honestly, which is always there for you, even when a lot of weak minded humans are not. And, uh, so it stinks when people are still attacking you after you've made it through all that, but that's just part of life. But, you know, it's like I said, if people want to be so daggone ignorant and say this, this kind of stuff, I mean, you know, this political correctness is like an infection. It's like a disease. It really is. You, you know, people getting so wishy-washy about words, you know, and even in the context, you know, there's a place where you don't do certain jokes and there's a place where, you know, you just got to accept it. It's, it's the ugly world. It's the not very wishy-washy world of humor, of fantasy, of horror. And I'm not saying let's all go full-on nihilistic. Nothing is sacred, but I mean, you know, you know, don't hold everyone to this ridiculous politically correct standard where you where everything's got to fit your weird little utopian uh, image of the perfect society where nobody says any words. The growing list of words that hurt feelings is so uh, it's unbelievable. You know, there used to be two or three words, two or three words that you just don't say. Now they're inventing like new words that are offensive somehow. Now even like the pronouns are offensive if you don't say it's like it's, you can't even you can barely even state facts or observations. You know, I was thinking like you know if I'm not allowed if I've got a diverse if I if I've got a bunch of different kind of characters, you know you know of all different races and one and I do you know three or four good Asian characters and then one really bad one then my work is racist bullsh you know what that is pure ignorance to, to go in that direction you're an ignorant person if you feel that way very very ignorant you are dumb i'm not the smartest man in the world but you're you're dumb as hell 
those of you watching are awesome. Thanks for taking time out with me today. Let's take a look at all this stuff. Let's make an apology to Junji Ito for desecrating his work. <laughs> see what we have, everybody. And okay, that's okay, right? Junji Ito is a genius. Junji, thank you. If you're out there, thank you for thank you for all your inspiration and. Pardon me for borrowing your work briefly. Everyone by Junji Ito's work. He used to read the stuff digitally online because it just wasn't out. Now, thanks to Viz, all this stuff is available, and it feels so good to have these beautiful books in my hand and to read them. Uh, beyond my computer because they brought the translations to print in the West. Use my sloppy pencil. around just figuring what order this goes in. Let's do one purely Lee Davis. Before we move on. Before we say goodbye. If if I put this on YouTube, I want to remind everybody of rumble.com slash Lee Davis. I don't like YouTube as much as I used to because they're censoring a lot of people. So like I said, this political correctness is, uh, you know, it's garbage and it's hurting art. It's hurting free speech. It's, it's crap. And YouTube has a lot of good stuff going for it, but the fact that they silence people, if it's not politically correct enough or it doesn't fit their narrative is, uh, should concern you. Right here. Oops, that's one ugly looking hand. Should we fix it or just pretend this guy's transforming? Let's fix it. My daughter says she doesn't like drawing people. I said it ain't easy, is it? But try to have fun with it. And don't put too high of expectations on yourself. You know, maybe if I didn't drink coffee, maybe my lines would be a little smoother. Just drink. Oh yeah, one thing Ito taught me, or one thing I tried, is I used less gray tones. I used a lot of gray tones in Door to Death. And um, I toned, I use them very sparingly lately, and I like it. I like it depending on just the lines. It's It feels liberating to not worry about gray tones, but if you are worried, you know, it, it does have a nice effect for sure, but I like just using the black ink, you know. It's it's cool to do it that way. My neck's hurting. Dang on. Ugh. I mean, I'm not sitting the right way. Forget I'm not even on camera right now, so so I can just lie on the back. It's uh, this is a uh, this one is kind of disappointing.
Let's use some sparing, like little, little details. Something I noticed. Ito can do this so well. Makes the defining lines and fills in kind of sparing details. See, I can't do it anywhere near as good as he can. It's one sloppy panel. It's hard to draw. Anyway, I got to go back to the regular work stuff in a minute. Here. That's it. That's that's pathetic, but there it is. It's my. Sloppy, half hearted illustration. So I close out. And... Okay. Only at uh, 14 magnification in Manga Studio right now. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it uh, works to zoom out a little bit like this and fill in details as such. You gotta remember, you know, it might look sloppy up close, but I mean, that's that's the beauty. You know, you you, you when you zoom back out, it becomes a little more defined. And sometimes you can even draw from afar, so to speak. All right, everyone. I'm going to say goodbye now. Uh, so, all right. It's good seeing you all go, uh, even though I didn't really see you, but. Oh, it's tired. <clears throat> God bless y'all. Bye bye.